Number 12. State which of the following species are amphiprotic and write chemical equations illustrating the amphiprotic character of these species. Then we have letter B. So is H2PO4- minus an amphiprotic, aka an amphoteric species? Maybe your teacher or professor might say amphoteric. But basically, these species act as an acid or can act as an acid and a base. It just depends on the certain situation. Now, how do we find that out? Well, acids, remember, always lose one hydrogen, right, in the form of an H+. So you have to have hydrogens to lose. In this case, for H2PO4-, minus, yeah, I mean, I have two hydrogens that I can lose. So this is a check. It can act as an acid. Bases are a little bit more tricky to figure out. Bases can gain one hydrogen, right, from the acid. And how do we see that? Well, we can either see it as two different things. We could either check that it's negative or neutral. But if you definitely have a negative charge, it can definitely act as a base, no exceptions. And in H2PO4, there was a negative charge here. So we are good to go. So technically, H2PO4- minus is an amphiprotic or an amphoteric species. Now we just have to write equations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work uh, concurrently with both equations, and then I'll break them up. So we have H2PO4-, minus, and we got H2PO4-. Minus. One of them is going to act as the acid. The other one is going to act as a base. Now, remember guys, you can't have two acids or two bases on the same side of your equation. So if you're calling this as an acid, you have to react it with the base. And on the flip side, if you're going to say that this is a base, you have to react that with the definite acid. Now, you just got to give examples of a definite base and a definite acid. These can change. So this is where the variation of this type of question comes in. So for me, a definite base would be just something that doesn't have any hydrogens, right? We kind of want to just make sure that it's only a base and that it can't be, you know, amphiprotic. So there's a couple of examples here. We can use maybe uh, CN minus. We could also use S2 minus. Um, doesn't really matter. I guess I'll do CN minus just to show that, hey, there's no, you know, hydrogens here. But you could have used um, OH minus as well. Even though there is an H, OH minus is hydroxide. It's like the basic component of a base. Acid, this just comes from your six strong acids because six strong acids will never be basic. So I'll, I'll say HCl. You could have said HBr, you could have said HI. You know what? Let's do HBr. Let's change it up a little bit. Okay, now we're going to put that yield sign in. And now we're going to make our pairs. If this was an acid, technically on the other side, it will turn into its conjugate base. So on the flip side, your acid will always turn into your conjugate base. And then because of that, your base that you started with, that gained the hydrogen, that's going to turn into your conjugate acid. Okay. Now we just have to find out what these are. Well, that comes from these rules down here. If you're starting with an acid and you're turning it into a base, Remember, you lose that one hydrogen, and because of that, you minus one to the total charge. So here we go. We have two hydrogens, but since it's losing one hydrogen, you got to get rid of it. So now it would just be one hydrogen, and maybe I won't do colors because that might be confusing. One hydrogen, and then PO4. Now, it was a negative one charge. You lost a hydrogen, so minus one. Negative one minus one is a negative two. Now you just got to do the same 
for the Cn minus, but the Cn minus is a base. A base turning it into its conjugate acid gains one hydrogen and plus one to the charge. So Cn minus, there was no hydrogen, so you just add one. HCN, add one to the total charge. It was a negative one charge, so negative one plus one is neutral, so I don't need to write anything there. But that would be the first equation. Now we just have to do the same thing for the other one. So if this is now acting as a base, it's going to come in and turn into its conjugate. It's got to be the other one, so it's conjugate acid. And then, vice versa, the HBr that was an acid will turn into its conjugate base. You guys are getting the idea. Okay. So, a base turning into its acid, base converting into the acid, you gain one hydrogen. So there was two hydrogens, just bump it up to three. So now it would be H3PO4. It was a negative one charge. Negative one, you gained a hydrogen, so that's plus one. Negative one plus one is neutral, so I don't have to write anything there. And then the acid, turning into its conjugate base, you lose the hydrogen. So just get rid of that H. Now it's Br. HBr was a zero charge. So zero minus one, you lost a hydrogen, would be a negative. And there you go. That's it. Hopefully this one helped. Um, yeah, these are crazy, but really, really good practice for future uh, sections in this chapter. I guarantee you that it's going to get crazy. <laughs> so enjoy the ride. And I'll be here every step of the way. So anyway, we like crazy. Chem is crazy, but it's fun. Right? Am I the only one that thinks that? I don't know. At least, at least one person thinks that. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.